Hello, everyone. It's Phil Jones, and joining me is Rob Brennan from Sony. Rob, how are you? I'm good, Phil. How are you today? Great. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Sony's new XW series laser projectors, which I've had the opportunity to review two of them over the past several months. And needless to say, I am incredibly impressed. But before we get started, we'd like to thank our sponsors, AV Pro and Meridio, for helping us put on this year's Fall Projection Summit, where we talk about all things related to projection systems. But today, we're going to be talking about some of the coolest projectors on the market, which are the Sony XW series. So, Rob, um, tell me a little bit about the series. This replaces the old VW, because for a long time I kept saying VW, you guys kept correcting me and said, no, not VW, XW. Right. Uh, it, it, you're absolutely right, Phil. This is a complete replacement um, of our uh, VW lineup series. So the XW represents a significant change in direction uh, for our consumer projectors, uh, most notable being that these are now all running z phosphor laser. So essentially, you know, lamp is dead, long live laser. So we had a great run with VPL. Uh, VPL projectors were awesome. I love them, but the XW is a completely new take from Sony in the uh, home consumer um, projector space. And, and there's a lot of features that are going to be common. So first thing, right. if you're looking at a Sony SXRD home theater projector, it is a native 4K projector. Now, the piece that I like, all three models are great. And I said I removed, I have reviewed the flagship model as well as the entry level model. But it's the entry level model to me that I really think um, is a is a game changer. The uh, the VW 5000 ES. I absolutely love this projector because I think it's the best balance of performance features at a price that is approachable to, to right. most um, customers out there. And I actually gave it a hot product award. Units available in white and black, depending on where you want to mount it. And it's pretty much the replacement for one of our other favorite projectors um, in Sony's lineup, which is the um, VW325. So can you talk a little right. bit about the differences between these two projectors? Sure. Um, you know, they actually could not be uh, more dissimilar. They are wildly different projectors. Uh, the XW5000 ES is not a reskin. All of the major components when it comes to picture quality and image processing have been changed. Some have been upgraded, some have been designed completely from scratch. So it, it starts with, with the big obvious one in the room, right? We're going from high pressure mercury lamp based um, projection to laser projection. Um, we're going from um, an X1 style processor, so the VW series already had a very good video processor, but to our flagship uh, processor with the X1 Ultimate. The entire optical block in terms of the SXRD panel has been redesigned. They're both still native 4K, um, but we've redesigned the optical block so it's a little bit smaller. We've redesigned the optical path for better brightness, better contrast. We've redesigned the cooling system, it's 35% smaller. Um, pretty much everything about the projector has completely um, been reimagined and still be able to say, this is the least expensive native 4K laser projector that you can buy today. The big thing about uh, something like a VW 5000 ES is last year, if you wanted a Sony um, 2000 lumen laser native 4K Sony home theater projector, how much did that cost, Rob? It was the 915. Was so the 9, 915 was twenty thousand dollars. So it's a heck of a rebate that you're getting uh, for the XW 5000 ES. You know, coming in at six thousand dollars now. Uh, not only is it laser, when you compare it to the 325, you get 500 lumens, um, anti lumens of brightness more, which is notable and uh, and right. beneficial, especially when you're trying to recreate HDR content. So, so you have the reliability of a laser that turns on and off as quick as your TV. You can watch it like a TV. Um, it's, it's noticeably brighter, 25% brighter for about $500 right. um, more, which, which to me is just absolutely um, outstanding. Now let's talk about the, the SXRD panel because this is new as well. For all these models, um, the 7,000, 5,000, and even the 6,000, utilize a new 4K UHD SXRD panel. How is this different than the panels you used in the past? 
Uh, there, there are a couple of changes. So first, let's talk about kind of the obvious difference. It's a little smaller, and part mm -hmm. of the reason for uh, uh, it being smaller is there is a resolution change. So mm -hmm. the XW is, as you mentioned, 4K UHD. So that's mm -hmm. 16 by 9, 3840, 2160. That's the 4K resolution we all think about. Um, however, the VW series was actually 4096, 2160. So it actually was a 179 imager. Um, and the reality was what that meant is that there was pixels in the SXRD panel that you never used. If you were going full screen, uh, there were 7% extra pixels on the left and the right that were never used. Mm -hmm. If you're going letterbox, well, then, of course, you know that you have you know, black bars top, top and bottom. Um, so we decided to go with the kind of consumer standard 4K, which allows the imager to be smaller. Now, I'll give you one extra kind of weird, odd side benefit of doing that. Um, as you know, right, all of the light from your light engine, whether it's lamp or laser, is kind of distributed over your 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 imaging panel, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we used to have was a 1500 lumen lamp projector divided over this 17 by nine imager. Now mm -hmm. we've got a 2000 lumens divided over a, a 16 by nine. It's brighter because all of the light from the light engine when you go full screen is on the screen. Mm -hmm. So every lumen that the laser can produce, you're actually able to, able to see. Even mm -hmm. if we had just made the SXRD change but kept everything else the same, you still would have picked up about 7% more brightness. Um, and that has really enabled us to uh, deliver higher performance, smaller chassis size, easier to install, installs in more places, and uh, just reimagined again, redesigned our entire lineup from the ground up. The original imager was designed for cinemas. Content shot for us, whether it's on broadcast, Blu-ray is not delivered that way. So right. because of that, like you said, you were wasting, you were wasting um, imagery. Right. And, um, you and so the, yeah, you, you just weren't maximizing it. Now the other change uh, that we made, um, so SXRD is, as, as you know, Phil, um, it is a liquid crystal on silicone, you know, design. SXRD is Sony's version of that. Uh, but we've improved the manufacturing process. So it is now 10% more efficient in terms of light reflection. So mm -hmm. it, it, in, um, by comparison to like a 3 LCD system where the light just passes through in liquid crystal on silicone or SXRD, the light passes through twice. It is reflected back through the panel itself. So the reflective properties of the panel are 10% higher. It's also 50% um, improved in terms of light um, mm -hmm. uh, absorption. So when it needs to go black and it needs to get high contrast and block out light, it's 50% more efficient at doing that, and also 10% more efficient at allowing light to, uh, to pass through. So again, 2,000 lumens is what you start with, and you're getting even more of that through the entire system out onto the screen, which is why when you look at it, it looks fantastic. Right now, when you look at home theater projectors, the majority of the ones that are out there are either single chip DLP, or they are maybe three LCD, or with, with some sort of pixel shifting. So right. if you want a three chip native um, projector, there's only pretty much two games in town. And um, at the price this, is, this unit's at, there's, it has no competition. So, right. so um, but that resolution makes a big difference. So for example, I still have all these little test files. And when you zoom in the sections of this image, the amount of detail that's there is, is amazing. We always say the reason why you want to have a 4K projector is you can have a bigger image that you can sit closer to right. and the image will be sharper. Um, has there been some improvements to pixel shifting? Yes, there has been. Pixel shifting has improved over the last few years, but there's still no substitution for native 4K resolution. It is just sharper. If I look at this image here, this is a, an image of a, of, a, of a village. There's a ton of information here. And if I zoom in, I can read the freaking sign way <laughs> off in the distance. And right. the content is shot at 3840 by 2160. And the imager, the panel is 3840 by 2160. So every pixel that is on that, in that material that's on your Blu-ray or in your Netflix show, you are going to be able to see. Right. So that is something about it. And What's the benefit of having um, three imagers versus something that's maybe a single chip? How does that impact color and things like that? Yeah, the, the, the primary benefit is that you have consistent brightness. So when you're using 
a three imager based system that means not only is your peak brightness which is usually met as you know you know measured typically with like a white you know box it's like great so that's my white brightness mm -hmm. but then you start putting in colors whether it's red green or blue or, or variations you start mixing those colors together your brightness just jumps off a cliff when you're using a single chip solution because those colors can only be showed sequ shown sequentially and mm -hmm. they're flashed you know very quickly um, mm -hmm. the net effect of that is a dimming of the image with mm -hmm. this uh, new sxrd system your brightness for color is consistent so if we say, you know, 2000 lumens is, you know, X foot Lamberts on whatever size screen you have, or you convert it over to nits and say it's that many nits, it's going to be that many nits no matter what color you're looking at. So the color that you're seeing, so especially for HDR content, is rich, it's vibrant, it's engaging. You know, if, you, if you're watching sports, especially live short, uh, sports that are played, you know, outside, you know, in the natural sunlight, it just looks real and bright and engaging uh, like it should. So for example, Colorvium. Colorvium is the combination of the, the color gamut and the brightness. brightness that that color can be, can be reproduced. You wanna be able to reproduce a wide range of colors at higher luminances. So having this extra color really is noticeable and beneficial when you deal with, with HDR material. Yep, it, 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 and you said it, especially with HDR. That's not to say that SDR uh, material doesn't benefit from it as well. It does, but the differences with HDR are night and day between the two systems. Exactly. Now, the other thing, and you can see this, by the way, if you want to compare a three-chip system that shows you all the colors at one time versus a single-chip solution, like maybe a DLP, take your camera, set it to a higher shutter speed, and take a photograph of the screen. You will notice that if you look at a three-chip device, display, the, the, you will see all the colors. If you do that with a single chip, what you end up with is the photographs look purple and green and blue. That is because your camera's capturing so fast that it's capturing the, the wheel or Individual the deal trying to do one color at, or in between right. two colors. And you end up with these almost distorted looking colors when you try to capture it for photography. I know that right. because I got to train new reviewers on how to shoot DLP screenshots and we have to shoot them at incredibly low shutter speeds with things paused. Well, one last thing just to add, um, and again, probably your viewers and, and readers already know this, but um, it's not just taking pictures if you're a reviewer. There is a percentage of, of viewers that are highly susceptible to something called the rainbow effect, which is uh -huh. you, you can perceive, especially in motion mm -hmm. shots, especially if the camera is panning, you will be able to pick up the individual colors. I myself, I'm not very sensitive to it, but I catch it out of my peripheral vision. So if I am looking to one side of the screen, I will be distracted and, and turn my head. It's almost like, you know, squirrel, squirrel, because I'll pick <laughs> up on the flashing. So I, I remember there's that, there's that famous episode of Game of Thrones that's too dark, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the red witch comes and lights everyone's swords on fire. That scene makes my eyes go 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 mad uh, if it's a single chip system because in that scene I see the flicker. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, not everyone can see it, but it's 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 kind of the you know the price that you pay for you know using a single chip solution. There's another. Mm -hmm. There's a different price you pay for using a you know a, a, a e shipped you know kind of solution. And with the Sony projectors, that those are just not penalties you have to deal with. And by the way, three chips are gonna make it a little more expensive than one, which is another reason why when you look at something like a Sony, it commands a premium over a single chip and why it, the chassis is normally right. going to be a little bigger. Right, we, we have yeah. our baseline is very solid. There aren't any holes in it. You can get better Sonys, but the entry Sony is by no means um, you know, uh, missing any key technologies or components. Okay, so you got this three new SXRD panels, right? But these panels have to fit into um, an optical block. So Correct. you are, so what's up with this new optical block? So yeah, so again, we, we had to design, design everything again from scratch, starting with the Z Phosphor laser. When we went to the smaller um, you know, 0 0.61 inch SXRD panels, that also then had to change our entire optical block had to be reworked. So all of the optics themselves, all of the polarizers had to be um, adjusted and re-engineered uh, to take advantage of not only the smaller size, but also to make sure that we're taking full advantage of the laser light engine. So when we talk about um, 
uh, it's not just that it's a laser. It's not just that the laser is bright. It's the ability to get that brightness and accurate color out of the projector. So all of this was engineered um, from scratch to make sure that we could do that. And again, the result is um, higher brightness, better contrast, better color, smaller footprint. And we can bundle all of that together with the new XW series. The new panel applying with the new optical block means it, they're more reflective, which means you get the right, utilized, you get more out of the laser, which is why one of the reasons why it's, even the 5,000 is at 2,000 um, anti-lumens. The next thing is you said it, it's better at making blacks. And that's one yeah, of the so things- essentially light, essentially light absorption, right? So you know, with that kind of um, reflective SSRD panel, you have two chances of that, uh, basically turn off the pixels you want to be black, right? You can block the light from coming in and you block it if it tries to reflect back out. And so it's 50% more effective at doing that. And so your black level just in general is improved. And we know that projectors, you know, as a general rule, um, are not known for, you know, black level performance. If you want black level, that's an OLED. That is an OLED that gives you black level performance. Projectors have a different, um, you know, baseline and their black level is generally elevated compared to televisions. Mm -hmm. um, this projector, excellent black level reproduction, which you've seen for yourself. I've reviewed pretty much every Sony projector over the last several years. These new projectors, whether it's a 5,000 or a 7,000, have very, very, very good black level and shadow detail. The ability to precisely regulate the light source plus um, the ability for the native black level capabilities and contrast capabilities of the projector means you can see someone wearing a black suit standing in the shadows in right. a dark scene. You know, again, the, 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 the VW series was great. It, it was state of the art for what we could produce at the time. And yeah. the game has changed. We can produce something better today. Um, and it's, it's a combination of, of everything we talked about so far um, to, a, to, to really be able to deliver high performance. I, you know, for me, it's movies like, you know, new movies that come out here, you know, here's a shot from Aquaman, HDR. It's about bright and bold and great. When I really want to test some, you know, HDR, I'll go like to, to you know, Ridley Scott's Alien mm -hmm. original in HDR, right? Mm -hmm. All of the information and, and suspense in that movie is like at two nits. So mm -hmm. if you can't, uh, you know, uh, uh, see, the, you can't see anything below like 50 nits. That movie doesn't exist, right? There's just no <laughs> um, And that's really uh, what this projector, you know, enables. It it now can live in the Aquaman world and it can live in the alien world and it can give you that kind of performance. Yeah. yeah. And, and as you mentioned, even if we're not talking HDR and we're just talking regular SDR, this is actually a shot from Lawrence of Arabia. And it is, the, I mean, the, the amount of detail is was was ridiculous you know yeah. and um all the shadow detail the, the his eyebrows the uh the blacks of the pupils of his eyes all of that stuff um you get from contrast so it's about having that great combination of brightness and black level and great color ends up with something that is really good like the skin tones out of the box were great right. a lot of a lot of times um projectors um they uh, they tend to be especially laser projectors. Tend, things tend to be a little bluish, mm -hmm. or or um, because a lot of times uh, the laser is a blue phosphor based right. laser. So things tend to be a little bluish, or they add a yellow greenish. phosphor to it, or it ends up being a little greenish. Um, now that makes it brighter, but no one want, but green skin does not look right. So so being able to have so this has a really good color balance on on top of that, and and all of it makes. Um, Really cool. You can actually see the little film grain that was in the in the in the right. scene. Everything else, it's just amazing. Um, now, you have this new imager. You have this new optical block. You got a laser that can be precisely uh, regulated. But all of that stuff is just basically ingredients. So mm -hmm. we've always said that the video processor is kind of the recipe, right? Right. It, it, it's 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 the analogy. There is you can give the best ingredients in the world to you know, home cook, they can make a, a good meal. You get those same ingredients to a world-class chef and it's transformed. So the brain is really what, what makes the difference. Um, I, you know, I can go out and buy the same equipment that any professional athlete uses, um, but I can't perform at that level. There is a skill um, that is beyond the hardware and that's really what, what the brain is. Yeah. Um, so 
up until you know this new change in the lineup of the XW series, the X1 Ultimate was already available, but only in our highest end GTZ 380, you know, $90,000 projector. Um, and what we've done is we've taken that same brain and we brought it to every model in the lineup. So now all of the projectors can take advantage of our best in class processing. So when we think about, okay, you know, but what does that mean? Um, you know, what can it do that is that is different and, and, and unique? I mean, a lot of times when we think about processing, we think about, well, it's just a video upscale. It's just taking high definition and making it 4K or taking standard definition and making it 4K. And of course that's that's baked in. Uh, but the processor is responsible for, for managing so much more. Um, the, as you mentioned, the dynamic nature of the backlight, exactly what needs to happen. Uh, the tone mapping for very challenging scenes. Um, how much, where's, you know, where's it gonna happen on a frame by frame basis. And of course the control of the SXRD panel itself um, all has to be uh, modulated and regulated through the process. A lot of times people, when they try to buy a projector, will will buy it a lot of times based on specs. And right. I could run two projectors and they'll both have the same contrast, measured contrast. They may have the same brightness measurements. They may even have the same color gamut coverage. But then when I play something, it looked completely different. That okay. is a decision that is done by the video processor and the manufacturer. And I have noticed that, that a lot of times I have seen projectors that are theoretically have better black level. And when I test them with Calman, have better measured black level. But then right. when I play video, the Sony's yeah. blacks are better. Yeah, it, 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 does, it, does, it kind of doesn't know what to do. Yeah. 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 What, what, are the, what, are, what are the big changes that, that or one of the, the big differentiators, let's say, especially in the world of contrast, so we talk about black level, um, is the processor's ability to manage localized or micro contrast decisions. Oftentimes, we think about contrast, we go, okay, ANSI checkerboard, big block of white, big block of black, and we're gonna repeat that, four columns, four rows, and, and then we measure that and we, we think that we've learned something. You take a look at a scene like this, and you know uh, that you just had from, from Spider-Man, Where's the solid block of white? Where's the solid block of black? Everything is a mixture of everything else. Mm -hmm. And so this localized contrast, um, these decisions that have to be made um, so that you can have a good black level, but you don't want to crush out chatter detail. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to have brightness. Um, you don't want to have too much white clipping. All mm -hmm. of that has to be managed by the processor on a, on a frame by frame basis. And, mm -hmm. and Sony's experience really shows um, through when you put content, real world content onto a projector or for that case, you know, a television. Yeah, and and like I said, there's there's only so much brightness. Um, there's a lot of extra, there's a lot of brightness information or brightness range that's found in HDR content and a projector can't do it. So yeah, projector way beyond the projector. Make, yeah, so projectors have to make decisions on how it uses its limited contrast capabilities, brightness and black level, to try to give you the most HDR-like image out of material that has that far exceeds its capabilities. Right. Um, and you have to be careful. If you try to chase all the highlights and all the shadow detail, what you end up with is an HDR to SDR adapter is what you're doing. Right. And you end up flattening the image and losing that pop that makes it HDR. So if you just say, yeah. hey, it's a great HDR signal because I can see all the highlight details and all the shadow details, a lot of times that result does not look like the HDR would have looked on a flat panel that could actually reproduce it. Right. So the, the, the reason for that, of course, is HDR is really a TV technology. You know, it's it's content is mastered on televisions. It's graded on televisions. When you go buy a, a, a movie or you go digitally purchase a movie, you stream a movie, you know, the, the director, the editor, the cinematographer, when they sat down and they said, here's my vision, they were making a vision, a, a version for a television. You know, and the dynamic range of even the most average TV is significantly greater than, than that of most projectors. And so, you know, the, the simplest explanation of this, Phil, is that there's an H, there's a recipe for HDR, but it assumes you have a TV. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sony recognizes that with our projectors. So we look at the recipe, but we certainly aren't beholden to it. We will say, mm -hmm. we have a different piece of hardware than that. We're going to make different localized decisions so that we can maintain the creative intention behind the film, 
because that's what's most important. Yeah. The image quality is more important than any me any static measurement you can make. Does it look good? Does it sound good if it was an audio product? If those things are true, then you're on the right path. Yeah, and it, it comes down to you can ca calibrate your projector, try to get the colors as accurate as possible. But when it comes to how it treats HDR, that is a man each manufacturer makes a different decision. So yeah, now it's yeah, no what looks best to you. All right. If you know the reds are right and the greens are right and the and the grayscale is right, now it becomes which one looks best to you. Like I said, I'm completely giddy um, about the unit, and at six thousand bucks. It's a it's an approachable price. I've seen some decent looking DLP projectors in the two thousand dollar range, but can it match this in any way, shape, or form? Absolutely not. Okay. Now let's talk about a few things too that people go, well, the new one doesn't have motorized lenses. Why doesn't it have motorized lenses, Rob? They all don't. They all don't sound like that, Phil. I'm sure they sound perfectly <laughs> normal. Uh, you know, it's 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 a great question. So yes, one of the the um, uh, changes. Um, uh, from the 325 now to the 5000 is that it is now a full manual lens versus a motorized lens. And the reason we did that is, is really straightforward. Um, this entry model doesn't have picture position, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be changing aspect ratios and zooming or shifting um, the picture in between scenes. That was never part of the entry 4K projector that Sony offered. So the reality was in the 325, you had a motorized lens that you motorized one time when you set it up. <laughs> and then yeah. you would never use those buttons again. Um, and when we're, when we're sitting to make this piece, we wanted to have the price be as close to the 325 as possible. We really liked this, you know, under $6,000 for entry, but native 4K and laser and everything else. And we have to make decisions on where we want to spend the money. Um, we also were trying to make a smaller chassis as well and all of those things together. And at the end of the day, we realized that the motorized lens, while on paper, it certainly sounds good to have, doesn't provide the end user any real benefit. It does mean that it's probably going to take you an extra two minutes during the setup because you're going to have to put your hands on the projector and uh, change the zoom and you're gonna to have to you know, ship horizontal or vertically if you, if you need to and adjust the focus. And then once it's done, you'll you'll never know that it's missing again. Um, yeah, and the most we important feel that, thing yeah, right. is horizontal and vertical lens shift and the zoom range for this type right. of projector. Because that just means that you can align it to your screen properly without any key, digital keystoning. So right. that is the most important thing for a customer at this price point looking at this type of projector for the type of application it's designed for. Um, and, and to me, I can't use a projector in my room unless it has vertical and horizontal lens shift because I can't align it to my screen. And whether right. it's motorized sure. or not, I don't care. The main thing is, can I get that image lined up up my screen and focus? And if I got to turn a little knob to do it and I can choose between a laser and using the remote control to set that up, guess which one I'm going to pick? I'm going to pick the laser. Yep. And that and that's the decision ultimately, you know, that we made. There were other features and technologies that improved the day-to-day -day performance of the projector um, mm -hmm. rather than the one-time setup performance. And, and that enabled us to offer, you know, again, this phenomenal package at six thousand dollars. And so exactly. while, I, while I certainly you know understand that someone goes, oh, you know, oh shucks, I wish, you know. Uh, this is a better decision ultimately. And once you set the projector up and you look at it, you will agree this was the right call. You got to, you only get a certain amount of things you could add at a price point you're trying to hit. And right. and I and I think the reason why we gave it a hot product award is because I thought you, I think that you made the best choice. Sony made the best choice they possibly could on the pieces they chose to make a projector at six thousand bucks that you would look at and go, holy cow, that picture is amazing. And 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 I and 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 that's what I, that's the reason why we gave it a hot product right. award. We there is three more models, like I said, and we mm -hmm. reviewed the um, I reviewed two of them, the seven thousand and the five thousand. And while while I'm amazed with the five thousand, there's some benefits to stepping up to the seven thousand. So first thing, motorized lenses. So we talked about the fact if you guys want to use you know picture positioning and and screen masking and you want all that stuff that's you can do that with the 7000 right right okay so, so uh, essentially the, the yeah the differences between the 5000 and the um uh the 6000 
the, the short version. You can see there's a little bit more in terms of lumens, and it really is going to um, a, a, a slightly higher quality lens, the ACF lens, with picture position. So that means it's motorized, it has lens memory, you know, yada, yada, yada. So my simple way of looking at this is, you know, brightness aside, if you are using a 16 by nine screen, then uh, the 5,000 completely works for you, you're ready to go. If you're going with an anamorphic style screen, like, you know, 235, 240, whatever, um, and occasionally you're gonna watch, you know, full screen stuff, or you're gonna watch, you know, movies from Netflix in addition to, you know, your media server, then a, a projector with lens memory is probably the direction you want to go, in which case you're 6,000, 7,000. Uh, but again, in terms of the brain, in terms of the optical uh, optical block, SXRD panels, all of those are the same. It's mm -hmm. just, what's the aspect ratio of your screen? Um, uh, and and do you can you benefit from slightly higher brightness, either because you need it, because your screen is larger, or you have slightly elevated ambient light, or because you're willing to pay a little bit more for even more HDR pop. And that's the difference between the projectors. Yes, and then like I said, the and of course the motorized lens, the lens is besides being motorized, it, it's a new one called an ACF. Talk a little bit about the ACF lens. Sure, so um, the the ACF and the lens, um, what we'll call our standard 4K lens for the 5000, in concept they're very similar, right? Glass elements, uh, acrylic um, outermost lens, uh, the difference is that there are more focusing elements in the ACF lens. So you get a slightly sharper image, especially in the corner. So if you really are trying to push um, your projector to go as large as possible, the larger your screen goes, the more challenging it is to keep the center super sharp and in focus and the edges um, mm -hmm. of the screen, especially the corners. Uh, so the ACF lens does a better job of that manually because of the additional focusing uh, focusing elements. Now, I will say that both projectors do have what we call digital focus optimizer, mm -hmm. which is basically built into the brain of the processor that recognizes that lenses aren't perfect. And we've actually trained the processor to know um, uh, how much kind of uh, pixel shift, uh, that's probably a bad word to use, how much pixel drift, right, mm -hmm. you are typically are gonna see in the corners with these lenses and we adjust for that on the processing side. Um, so both projectors have some mitigation for lens quality, but the ACF lens just gives you a better base starting level. So if you're really trying to push that size, you know, if you're sitting in the 120 inch range, you'd be hard pressed to visually see a difference between these two lenses, left and right. You start pushing past 200, you'll start to see some differences in the corners um, using these two different lenses. Yes, yeah. and and so people that kept asking me, you know, the ACF is kind of the replacement. I won't say the replacement. The ACF is designed to be the premium lens, like the Arc F lens was for the other models. And before it was going from a premium from the standard lens to a premium lens, a nine fifteen to a ten twenty five. You were talking almost what thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. So oh yeah, e e easily ten thousand dollars just for the lens. Yeah, so, and um, so this lens is 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 really really good. It offers a lot of those benefits. Now it's smaller, because guess what? Everything inside of the box is smaller. If you have a smaller optical block, you have a smaller you have smaller panels. panels. Guess what? The lens itself can be smaller. That's almost like if you're a photographer, full frame cameras with really big sensors require really big lenses right. to cover that entire sensor. If you go to something like an APS-C or a micro four thirds, those those imagers are smaller and the optics can be smaller while still delivering the same optical quality. From, um, well, I, mean, look, look, I mean, look at how good smartphones are these days at taking pictures. And those lenses are tiny because the imagers are yes, you know, what, what the size of an eraser hit. And that's, <laughs> the way, that's the way that this works. But you know, you're absolutely right. The ACF is essentially the new arc F lens. You can't take an arc F lens and slap it onto this the same way you can't take a lens from, you know, camera manufacturer A with a particular, you know, flange distance and a, and a body type, type and just arbitrarily slap it onto another camera and get the exact same performance, let alone it may not actually physically go together, but the performance would be different because it's not designed for that system. So that's really what the ACF is. But I just want to, I just want to manage people's expectations and, and 
and make sure that when you're thinking about what's right for you as an as a, as a customer, if you are in this on the smaller kind of screen size, the difference is in just pure lens quality is negligible. Um, if you want the brightness, great. If you're going two, three, five, or two, four, oh screen and and picture position is a feature you will use, great. Those are reasons to step up to the six thousand or seven thousand es. Um, the lens will make a difference as the screen gets bigger. And that's where you'll get benefit, you'll, you'll get dividends on that investment. So whether you look at the five thousand, the six thousand, or seven thousand, um, more compact jas- chassis, better black levels, brighter image, sharp detail, at prices that are amazing for what you're getting. So um, the whole lineup is a home run. Like I said, I've already reviewed the five thousand, um, which you can see the review on Project Reviews. And I've already reviewed the 7,000, which you can also see on um, projected reviews. But I'm looking forward to doing the 6,000 because why not? I just like doing all these projectors. And I get to play with them for a couple of months while I have it. So so great, great lineup. And like I said, to me, the 7,000, if you're looking for anything under 50K, this is the one, one of the ones to beat. This is the one to beat to me. Um, I thought this picture was noticeably better than pretty much everything else on the market anywhere near um, its price point. So whether you're looking at a, an amazing um, uh, projector to get into um, 4K, native 4K with the um, the XW5000, um, or you're looking for a premium solution for a larger screen, 165, 200 anamorphic, and you're looking for something like a 7000 um, at about what, this is 2699, I believe is what this guy is. Yep. Okay, so um, so that's why we awarded a premium home theater. So great solutions, Rob. And as of, as always, thank you for coming to talk to me about Sony's uh, lineup of projectors. So 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 thank you um, for hanging out with um, Rob and I, and we shall talk to you next time. Bye bye.